As world leaders gather in Glasgow, and prepare to chow down at numerous COP26 buffets, food technologists urgently want them to grasp the role alternative proteins might play combating climate change. Researchers in many countries are looking for alternatives to traditional meat because farming animals is helping to drive up global temperatures. Even Hollywood stars have been jumping on the alternative protein bandwagon with with Leonardo DiCaprio among the most vocal. But aside from film stars, where are Wall Street and some of Europe's biggest institutional investors putting their money, we take a look at three of the hottest areas of this deliciously weird science. Our thirst for non-dairy milk is already huge. One in three Brits now drink plant-based milk on a regular basis, says retail sector analyst Mintel. So, perhaps regularly eating meat that's never mooed, oinked, or encountered a farm may be a logical next step, no longer just the vision of a Margaret Atwood novel stuffed with chicken knobs. In December 2020, Singapore became the first country to approve the sale of protein grown entirely in a laboratory. Scientists start by harvesting muscle cells from an animal, nutrients are steadily then added to feed those cells and grow the meat into tissue, this stew is called the cell media, which is then cultivated. San Francisco-based startup, Eat Just, is now selling its lat grown chicken nuggets in Singapore, a move that's part of the country's long-term security strategy so it can be less dependent on its neighbors for food imports. So, what are the barriers to many other countries doing the same? The real driver for all of this is getting regulatory approval says Dr. Carson Verhut, a partner at consultancy A.T. Kearney, which analyzes the food and agriculture sectors. Some countries have more appetite for this than others. In Europe, the Netherlands is at the forefront of lab-grown meat technology where analysts expect producers Moa's Meat and Meatable to push for EU regulatory approval in the next few years. In the US, it is widely expected that Bill Gates-backed Memphis Meats and New Age Meats will do the same. But regulation isn't the only hurdle to scaling up and expanding the cultured meat business, bringing down ingredient costs will be crucial. Most producers are still working with pharmaceutical grade ingredients and nutrients, but if those could be lower to normal food quality grades instead, then costs would come down significantly, explains Mr. Their Heart. One part of the standard recipe involves growing cells in a syrupy bath of fetal bovine serum, taken from pregnant cow's blood but Dutch scientists have now successfully replaced it and other animal components in its process. For ethical reasons, as well as for the simple reason FBS is very expensive and we could never produce meat at large scale for a broadly accessible price, we've succeeded in developing our own entirely animal component free growth media a company spokesperson for Mosa says. Still, farming meat in a lab is a slow, energy intensive process and optimizing this will also mean making the series of heating and cooling steps involved, much more energy efficient, although Jessica Ami. Vice President of Policy at the Good Food Institute says some producers are not that far off. Two separate studies out earlier this year found that, with investment, the production cost of cultivated meat could drop to compete with conventional meat by 2030. The life cycle study showed cultivated meat is also projected to comprise a staggering 35% of the global meat market by 2040. Several glowing reports suggest lab grown meat may bring big environmental benefits, low emissions plus less land and water usage than conventional farming. However, a more recent US study on expanding in vitro production warns those benefits could come at the expense of much more intensive energy use as the whole process moves away from agriculture and becomes industrialized. Cyril Fillett, global strategist for consumer foods for Rabobank, says the question is how many boxes the lab-grown product will tick for early adopters to remain interested. Taste, texture, price, sustainability, a long list of boxes. Will the novelty wear off or stick? Mr. Fillett adds that an important intermediate milestone will be the acceptance of hybrid products. Hybrid products are plant-based meat substitutes that contain lab-grown ingredients such as fats. If these products are accepted by the consumer, he says the development of fully lab-grown products might accelerate. A handful of firms are now working on 3D printers that could construct this dinner while you wait, by printing thousands of pre-programmed, sliver-thin layers, stacked on top of each other. Then used as your food and paste format, printers that can design bespoke pancakes, ice cream and confectioner are already popular in some high-end supermarkets. However, 
MSRME says companies are now testing the water with much more sophisticated versions. 3G bioprinting can print cells and materials together to create a more complex structured product, like a marble beef steak. New tech economy is a series exploring how technological innovation is set to shape the new emerging economic landscape. Extrusion technologies which have been used in the food industry for years, think hot dogs and pasta, are also being applied successfully in cultivated meat production. Barcelona firm Know the Meat has come up with one of the most realistic alternative meat products so far, thanks in part to its founder Giuseppe Sianti's expertise in bioengineering and tissue regeneration. It uses microextrusion tech to intricately print plant-based proteins in layers that build up into a large cut of meat strong enough, and with the right texture, to be sliced with a carving knife, like a Sunday roast. Working with the Faculty of Biomedical Engineering at the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, Israel-based firm Aleph Farms also created the world's first lab drone ribeye steak in this way, using 3D printing, in February. Alternatively, 3D printing can be used to create scaffolds from plant-based materials that allow cells to attach and grow into the final meat-based product. And if all this wasn't exciting enough, some printers then zap the result with lasers that will sizzle the food until it is cooked. Nanotechnology, or the science of maneuvering teeny tiny things around, is more commonly talked about in the manufacture of chips for phones, than fries. However, it also has many potential applications in the food sector. Using minuscule nanomaterials it is now possible to create packaging that keeps the products held inside edible for longer. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.